Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless last month was the hottest june on record that heat then carried through into july as a new record high global average temperature was set on monday and then broken the very next day triple digit heat index through the end of the week it's hot 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 all right after all we're in the middle of a season called summer now fast forward a few years and imagine that one morning you wake up to cook breakfast, you turn on the stove, and the gas doesn't work. And your living room's kind of cold, so you try to turn up the heat. But the thermostat won't go past 64. Then you're just so fed up, you jump in your car, you drive to get gas because the tank's empty, but every station you pull into, it's closed. Then an emergency bulletin comes across your cell phone saying that for the foreseeable future, Americans are instructed to limit travel to home and essential work, maybe medical appointments. Now, why is this happening? Because the UN has declared a global climate emergency. That's why. I am presenting a plan to supercharge efforts to achieve this climate solidarity pact through an all-hands-on-deck acceleration agenda. Leaders of developed countries must commit to reaching net zero as close as possible to 2040. That guy is the Tony Fauci of the climate issues. Net zero by 2040? Wait, what's that I hear? China's laughing, yes. It obviously would never abide by any climate agreement that slowed its growth. But regardless, the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres is undeterred in his plans to set up a global climate body to force us into compliance. Now, much like we saw during COVID, they plan to invoke emergency powers based on flimsy science. The narrative is already being set. The hottest June ever recorded uh, by a mile. We are walking on the hottest planet ever walked. The Southwest and Florida are bracing for more dangerous, record-breaking temperatures. Uh, there were record-breaking temperatures everywhere from China to Mexico. But scientists warn this is only the beginning as we see the growing impacts of climate change. Ah, and just as during the pandemic, we're supposed to believe the science, it's all settled. The, 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 the climate crisis is growing by the day. This will be the hottest June and July. It'll be the hottest summer, it'll be the hottest year. And we all know that because the science is telling it to us and because Mother Earth is responding by telling us exactly what's going on. Plans are moving forward for an ultimate vote by 2024 that would essentially give the UN control over your lives. It would mean less freedom and less money for you and more power for the government, in this case, a global government. In September of 2024, right before a presidential election, the UN will host what's called a landmark summit of the future. Member nations are planning to sign on to an agreement that will give the Secretary General of the UN standing authority to convene and operationalize automatically an emergency platform in the event of a future complex global shock of sufficient scale sufficient severity and reach. Now, our friends over at The Federalist are very smart to raise the red flag here. The so-called emergency platform would give the UN the green light to actively promote and drive an international response that places the principles of equity and solidarity at the center of its work. The New World Order is a group of elitist people bent on ruling the world through a single worldwide system of government. The appeal of this New World Order lies in its proposal to free the world of wars and political strife, and its promise to eradicate poverty, disease, and hunger. Its purpose is to meet the needs and hopes of all mankind through worldwide peace. This new world order will supposedly do away with the need for diverse world governments. This will be accomplished by the installation of a one world political system. The new world order will emphasize tolerance through the promotion and acceptance of other cultures and their values and ideologies. Its ultimate goal is a sense of unity and oneness with all people. Other objectives include the use of a single worldwide currency, as well as oneness in politics, 
religion, and moral values. The New World Order will promise worldwide peace, the absence of war, and the elimination of all political unrest. The problem with the acceptance and approval of any New World Order is that no government has ever offered, nor will it ever offer, real hope and peace for mankind. Those who desire the ushering in of a New World Order are in for a rude awakening. Only heaven brings lasting peace and happiness. The Bible makes it very clear that all things associated with his life on earth, with its sufferings, its decay, its discontent, and death, will continue with this physical life as we read in 2 Corinthians 4.16. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Although our physical bodies are growing older, and we notice that our outer man is progressively decaying and wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day after day. The new life we received at salvation is being transformed into the image and likeness of Christ as we mature in the faith, grow in grace, and gain a more intimate knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The one hope for all believers lies only in heaven, as we read in John 14, 1-4. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. It is the hope of heaven we need, not the false hope of a new world order, as the world is not our home, as we read in Philippians 3.20. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. The angle two years ago tried to warn you that COVID lockdown set the predicate for more to come. Their so-called public health experts were wrong on everything from lockdowns to masks to social distancing. Yet now we see the usual suspects lining up to exploit another hyped crisis. Of course, I'm talking about climate change. That was their kind of dry run for climate lockdowns or whatever they're going to do here. Remember what the scientists told us about COVID and how they ended up censoring opposing voices. Same deal here. So you should expect new waves of propaganda to wash over our schools, our news, and our entertainment, all trying to convince you that if you don't sacrifice your standard of living now, you're all going to burn up. But the only thing on fire here is their pants, because their policies would amount to nothing more than a transfer of wealth from our country to others who didn't earn their way, all in the name of equity. Everyone should understand by now, if any Democrat wins, in 2024, these UN global emergency powers will be invoked as soon as feasible. That means your standard of living will decline further, your freedom of speech, your freedom of worship, your freedom of association, your freedom of movement will all be limited. Our elected officials will hold regular briefings on the progress being made. They'll insist that the, they're just listening to the science. And just like during COVID, we're going to hear from people with long titles that we need to, need to hit our benchmarks before we can return to normal again. But of course, it won't be the old normal. It'll be the new normal that Obama hinted at years ago. We can't uh, drive our SUVs and you know eat as much as we want and keep our homes on you know 72 degrees at all times, and then just expect that every other country is going to say, okay, you know, you guys go ahead and keep on using 25% of the world's energy, even though you only account for 3% of the population, and we'll, we'll be fine. Don't worry about us. It was 2008. Now, of course, none of their climate rules will ever apply to Obama living the high life at his mansions in Martha's Vineyard in Hawaii. Or they're certainly not going to apply to billionaire activists like Bill Gates, who probably runs that AC pretty cool in Palm Desert. Certainly not going to stop Leonardo DiCaprio from flying private to Saint-Tropez. We have an emergency, all right. We need leaders who have the facts and the courage to call this UN power grab what it is, a complete and total fraud. Plans are moving forward for an ultimate vote by 2024 that would essentially give the UN control over your lives. It would mean less freedom and less money for you and more power for the government, in this case, a global government. 
The Antichrist will control a one world government, as we read in Revelation 13, 7. It was granted to him, the Antichrist, to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation, which is the world. We can plainly see the stage is being set for the Antichrist to take his place on the world stage. What will be the trigger that enables the Antichrist to become the leader of the one world government forcing all people to take his mark and to be worshipped as God? Over the years, there has been much speculation as to who the Antichrist is. Some of the more popular suspects have been Pope Francis, former President Barack Obama, former President Donald Trump. One of the most recent suspects is French President Emmanuel Macron. While the Bible gives many characteristics and clues about the Antichrist, I believe Christians will not know who he is until after the rapture. It is likely that when the Antichrist is revealed, we all will be very surprised at his identity. Agenda 2030 The USDA approves Bill Gates' lab-grown frankenfood meat as our global society lurches ever forward into a dystopian abyss. We are back with a new lab-grown chicken that was just approved for sale in the U.S. Could be headed to your dinner plate. Devin Dwyer has the details. Good morning, Devin. Hey, good morning, George. Americans ate 75 billion pounds of red meat and chicken last year. But what if some of that meat was not raised on farms, but instead of high-tech facilities? Scientists say that could be good for the environment and your health, and soon it could be on menus and store shelves. This morning, the USDA has approved cell-cultivated meat to be sold to the public for the first time. So that's where it all starts, just a few cells. Two cultivated meat producers now getting the green light to begin commercially selling their chicken, not raised on a farm, but in a facility. The meat is grown using real animal cells and large bioreactors fed with nutrients. I recently got a tour of California-based Upside Foods, the nation's first and largest cultivated meat producer. You're making chicken in there. Yeah, so if you look at this, this is a approximately a 200-plus liter tank. And we take cells from a chicken or an egg. It takes two weeks to grow the equivalent of one chicken. A thousand chickens or a hundred thousand chickens. So you're saying in this factory you can make more meat faster and cleaner than an average farmer? Well, ultimately, yes. The company says cell cultivated meat could help feed the world's booming population using a fraction of the land and water of animal farming and help reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Many experts say more study is needed. I got to try this cell cultivated chicken at the facility in California, guys. I got to say the texture was a little bit different, but it did taste like chicken. The company says they hope to get it on restaurant menus in the next few weeks, then maybe on store shelves in the next five years. And dozens of startup companies are getting in on the game, guys. You mentioned the texture. So is it more like tofu? You know, George, it was pretty close to chicken, uh, but maybe a little bit rubberier. <laughs> rubberier. Uh, you have to give it a try for yourself. Uh, a restaurant in California is going to roll it out next month. Hmm. Would you guys try it? I think I would. I would. I do like the reduction in animal cruelty, but mm, we'll see. The rubbery didn't sell me. <laughs> <laughs> I've been thinking about becoming a vegetarian. The New World Order Masters are replacing our God-given food with lab-grown monstrosities. So what's on the menu in the kingdom of Antichrist? Lab-grown chicken, steak, cricket flour, and all sorts of creepy crawling things. These meat in a test tube companies, like Upside Foods, are backed and funded by none other than Bill Gates. 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 5. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Bill Gates, under the influence of deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, is trying to destroy food which God declared good under the pretense of climate change. When the deception comes, if you're not a born again believer, you'll be swept away with it. The deception will be greater than you ever imagined in your life. It is going to be profound as to what happens.
people in the high places are Satanist. They're Illuminati. Spiritual power in high places that will bring about a one world government. And by doing that, they intend to rule the world. And they have the help of a whole uh, mass of demonic spirits who are able to perform all kinds of miracles, deceptive miracles, manifestations, and all of this stuff to help them to bring about that one world government. And the goal is so that they can put one man up and worship him as God, the Antichrist. Stay tuned as we watch Bible prophecy unfold right before our very eyes. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with Him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning. My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.